Welcome to Holy Angels Catholic Church in Chicago, Illinois, where Father Andrew Charles Smith, Jr., also known as Father Drew, is pastor, with Deacon Bruce McElrath, Deacon Mervyn O. Johnson, Mr. Tyrone Pittman, Minister of Music, and Executive Director of Music for the Chicago Black Catholic Choir, videographer and photographer, Gregory Evans Calloway, webmaster and lead web developer, Rex DeGier. We welcome you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and all have shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our loneliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. our hands and put a blessing over our children and teach you. May Almighty God be with you as you go forth to learn the good news that he has prepared just for you. And so we bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Prayer of excellence. 
exorcism, and the laying hands, laying on of hands, and prayer for them with our hands extended, so that we can fully participate in this group this, this time of year. Thank you.
while he was in Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. Many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. And my sisters and brothers, this is indeed the good news of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent. Call to mind our sin to ask God for the strength to turn away from sin, to repent and believe in the good news. It's been said that whenever God builds a house of prayer, the devil always builds a chapel. Submit to you that these words mean that we human beings fall short of the glory of God at times. Somehow we always find a way to bring the bad into the good. This is what's happening in today's gospel. Jesus is going to celebrate the Passover. Jesus is going to worship. But what happens? He ends up cleaning house. Jesus does not want anyone to confuse God's space with retail space. Now, it's common for us to think of Jesus as such a gentle and nice and meek person. We see it in the scripture. He has love and compassion for humanity. He heals the sick. Oh, but today Jesus is ticked off. He made a whip out of cords, kicked out the money changers. I remember when I first read this particular scripture, I was like, man, I don't think that's the Jesus I know. But after being at a game for about two and a half years, I want to make me a good Bible. Not for anybody here, because I got nothing but love. <laughs> Jesus said, Stop making my father's house a marketplace. The Jews answered, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. The temple that Jesus was talking about was the resurrection. The resurrection of his own body. Jesus was speaking about this temple and this resurrection. And one day for us, my sisters and brothers, we too, if we have faith, will be resurrected. Jesus understands human nature. The Lord was angered by the manner in which some people use religion to make money. It was supposed to be a house of prayer, but they turned it into a den of thieves. Might we be guilty of a similar offense? Do we just attend church as a form of networking or making a business contact? Do we just go to church to better our financial situation under the guise of coming up with something that will help the church, but in the end will only increase our pockets? Do we take advantage of our relationships as brothers and sisters in Christ to further our multi-level marketing scheme, a home-based business, or some other financial enterprise then in the end, we'll only end up hurting one of our fellow leaders. 
Do we stop coming to church because the pastor won't endorse the latest get rich quick scheme? And I'll stop right here to tell you. The Lord's temple is the church, and we must be careful not to defile it. The identity of the church is marked by the one who remains a scandal to the Jews and a fool to the Gentiles, Jesus Christ. To accept Jesus' invitations regard the measure of this world as inadequate and the measure for the one who is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Life of the church demands that we measure reality in a new way. Not by the wisdom of this age, but by the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is not revealed by hating one another. The power of God is not revealed by taking advantage of one another. The wisdom of God is revealed by our love for one another. We must have the mind of Christ and use our gifts appropriately to build up the body of Christ. Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. If we just look at our Bible, we understand how Christ displayed his power. The blind began to see, the lame began to leap, the deaf began to hear, and the dumb began to sing. Christ is indeed the power and the wisdom of God. His power is greater than the power of the enemy. When there's a hell on between the power of the devil and the power of God, the power of the devil will lose every time. God's power is revealed through weakness. So God's wisdom is revealed through the foolishness of the scandal of the cross. Apostle Paul says he wants to know nothing but Jesus Christ crucified. Now when Paul says that he's not being anti-intellectual, he's not being crazy, Paul is saying that nothing else really matters in the world but Jesus Christ. You can have all the money in the world. You can have the best house in the world, the nice clothes. You can have anything in the world, but it's nothing compared to the love of Jesus. Anything that we have can be taken away, but not the love of God. Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. He is the power of God for all eternity. By his word, the heavens came into existence. The Apostle Paul says, My speech and my message will not apply to the words of wisdom in a human way, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. For by him all things were created, and heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. But the devil does not want us to know the power of God. The devil does not want us to know the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. They tell us that wisdom is the ability to think and act using knowledge, experience, understanding, common sense, and insight. Wisdom has been regarded as one of the four common virtues along with temperance, fortitude, and justice. Our world has plenty of knowledge and education, but not necessarily a lot of wisdom. In fact, wisdom can often be learned from the fairly uneducated. Wisdom is different from knowledge. You can have knowledge without wisdom. We all know there are a lot of brilliant fools in the world. But you cannot have wisdom without knowledge. Because in order to discern the best way to achieve the goal, you have to be able to integrate, to fuse together all kinds of knowledge to come up with the truth. In this world, many people think they have the answer to everything. Do you have a problem? Buy this latest gadget. 
Are you hurting? Take this pill. Are you in distress? Watch Oprah or Dr. Phil. Do you need help? Turn to this government aid agency. Get you a little money. Get you a little cheese. See, we can easily find ourselves thinking like the world. We look for every excuse, everybody else. Our last resource is God. My favorite artist, Stevie Wonder, said it best. If you feel your life too hard, just go have a talk with God. We need to lean on the everlasting love of God. Apostle Paul talks about the wisdom of God and says, Oh, the depth of riches, both the wisdom and the knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgment and untraceable his ways. If we want to know what life is really about. We don't need to look at Oprah Winfrey. And I like Oprah. I wish I had some of my money. <laughs> but if we want to know what life is really about, we need to listen, pray, and lean on the wisdom of God. Every day we have different setbacks for stumbling blocks. No pill can solve that. No remedy can cure that. Only God. Jesus said, all things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. I stop by here to tell you. When you begin to doubt yourself. When you begin to doubt your talents. When you turn in on yourself and you despise everything about you when you look up in the mirror. Remember that Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. The scripture says the Lord did not give us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and self-discipline. If you are struggling with any affliction, and a lot of us have, everybody's dealing with something, don't let anybody fool you. But the good news is that Jesus Christ said, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Oh, therefore I will boast all the more glad of my weakness so the power of Christ may rest upon me. That's good news. If you're feeling tired right now, remember that Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. And you can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens you. If you're feeling hopeless right now, remember that Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. The scripture says, May the God of hope fill you with all the joy and peace of believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. If you are dealing with a difficult situation, seems like there's no way out, put on the helmet of state of salvation. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. That's why the Apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it's the power of God's salvation for everyone who believes. Yeah, there's been times when I want to pull out a whip in the cord, I tell you. But I stop my head to tell you, when I look out with it, I see the faith and it fills me with love. Just in the past week, last week, first week, lost her daughter. I was so proud of her. What a great display of faith. What a great display of love. Faith in one person can truly awaken the faith in another. You showed up and you showed up. Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. And I thank God that the kingdom of God is not consistent in talk but in power, in God's power. Celebrate every day, my sisters and brothers. Thank God for your life. Every time we look up something tragic is happening, reach out to Jesus Christ, accept him as your Savior, because we never know when the Lord is going to come calling. But we got to tap in and realize that Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. That is the good news for the day. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Please stand. Church, I present to you Mary, who will be baptized this season.
that God in his mercy will draw close to them and rest with them.
of God and the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name. For our good and the Lord's church. Please, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who seek pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our enemies. Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We give the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, and Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, you are faithful and wait the sacred pastoral feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that we are eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participate in the mysteries by which they have been revealed. They may be led to the fullest of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, and without end, we are coming.
We offer you more the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks to your heaven is worthy to be in the presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us the fullness of charity together with Francis, our hope, and blaze our mission and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your person, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray. The blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. The blessed apostles and all the saints will please you throughout the ages. We may merit to be glorious to eternal life and may praise and glorify your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, with Him, and in Him, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
came to take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
understand that we have a need here, that the freezer in the kitchen downstairs has gone out. And I'd like to present you with this check from the Men's Coalition for $500 for the purpose. Sunday Mass Closing Prayer. Thank you for worshiping with us. Be sure to join us again next Sunday. Until then, log on to our website at http colon forward slash forward slash www.holyangels.com for Father Drew's weekly message and God's Praises Tell, which features an interview of Father Drew by Andrew Light, Director of the Office of Black Catholics, Archdiocese of Chicago, on the Holy Angels Church website at http colon forward slash forward slash www.holyangels.com forward slash node forward slash 95. Also read Deacon Bruce McElrath's weekly blog, An Explanation of the Holy Angels Church Mural, which you are currently viewing, can be found on the Holy Angels Church website at http colon forward slash forward slash www.holyangels.com forward slash no forward slash five. Until we meet again, may all that you do give glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. <laughs>